What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, before I get into what I want to get into the main meat of this, the first hurricane of the season has formed in the subtropical Atlantic. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Dawn is now the first hurricane of the season. And the reason this is so impactful is because this is July. Like hurricanes do not technically happen in July. It's very rare for this. So what we are witnessing is a rare July hurricane. And even though this isn't going to be impacting any land, it's still significant and it may uh, be an indicator for what we would expect coming up in the season. So with that being said, let's go ahead and read the public advisory. Dawn becomes a hurricane just before reaching cooler waters. At 5 p.m., the center of uh, Dawn was located at 40 north, 50 west, moving north at 12 miles per hour. Maximum sustained winds have increased to 75 miles per hour with higher gusts. Steep, steep, uh, sorry, Steady weakening should begin later tonight or early Sunday, and Dawn is, for, Dawn is forecast to be a post-tropical cyclone Sunday night. Hurricane force winds extend out 15 miles from the center. Tropical storm force winds 70, pressures 988 millibars, which... With Dawn being a hurricane, and this is kind of off topic, I think it's kind of funny that last year we had our D-named storm, Danielle, be our first hurricane. Now Dawn is our first hurricane, and both of them formed in the subtropical Atlantic. Both of them were hurricanes in the subtropical Atlantic, so that should, as in itself is pretty interesting right there. We also have 95L that's going on, just meandering in the main development region right now. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and show you basically what we're looking at. We now have the updated numbers from what a lot of these guys are saying. Colorado State University put out on July 6th, 18 named new storms, 9 hurricanes, 4 major hurricanes. PSR released their forecast of 17 named storms, 8 hurricanes, and 3 majors on July 7th, the day after Colorado State. And the Weather Channel, just 3 days ago, at the time of making this video, call, is now calling for 20 named storms up from their 17 last month, 10 hurricanes up from nine last month, and five major hurricanes up from four last month. And the reason this is so impactful is because at this point, everyone is calling for an active hurricane season. About a month ago, we were thinking it's going to be about average or so, which in an El Nino year was already pretty impressive, but above average season during an El Nino year is like I don't think I've ever seen that before. I'm sure I, if if there if that's happened before in history, let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, that's how how big this thing is looking at, and what's really driving these values is two things here: one, the global sea temperatures that are absolutely out of control. The temperatures. Like there's a huge area of 29 plus degrees Celsius that's almost connected with the main development region from the Gulf of Mexico to off the coast of Virginia, all the way down to the Atlantic over here, and again in the main development region, which I have never seen that before in July. This is typically late August, early September uh, waters, and we're already about a month ahead of schedule. So that's the first thing. There's also 31 plus degrees Celsius waters all over the Gulf, all over the west coast of Florida, all over the Bahamas, all over Cuba, all over all these areas right here. And that's already pretty alarming. What's also alarming is the ocean heat content, which is how much energy the ocean, uh, the ocean waters have to fuel potential tropical cyclones. And the ocean heat content across all these areas, we have a huge area of over 100 plus across the MDR, across much of the Caribbean, across the Gulf, across the Atlantic jet stream over here. It's pretty insane uh, thinking about that already. And we have a 125 plus area from the Gulf all the way to Haiti and the Dominican Republic, Hispaniola rather. So that's going to continue to potentially increase right there. And then comparing that to 2020 right there, if we take a look at this, we had one area of 175 plus in the Western Caribbean. That's where Delta would wander into in September of 2020. And basically it was more localized in the Caribbean. It wasn't nearly as expansive in the Atlantic as it is right now. And it wasn't nearly as much in the Gulf as it is right now. So that's what we have going on right there. The shear continues to fluctuate. 
as we continue to talk. Where Dawn is, for example, there's not very much shear stopping this from strengthening, although the cooler waters are going to take care of that. Uh, the Gulf is still fluctuating. Today, there's no shear. Tomorrow's probably going to be a lot more shear. The same thing in the in the parts of the Caribbean. The Eastern Caribbean, we're going to start seeing fluctuating shear pretty shortly in the next couple of days or so uh, as Invest 95L starts approaching there. So everyone needs to keep that in mind as time continues to go on. We're going to go ahead and show you the shear forecast and the moist air forecast because that's or those are the two other components that we need to talk about. The shear forecast is pretty much comparative to other systems, or other seasons rather, right on schedule. Like last year, the shear would not let up until late August. And what we're seeing here is this year, like I said, the shear's on schedule. It's starting to fluctuate a lot more comparative to where we were in July 2022, or it was really stubborn and just holding. But this is basically your typical July shear right here, just very fluctuative, very so that's what we have for 10 days out right here. We have shear that really just calms down in the main development region. Shear starts calming down the Eastern Car uh, Caribbean. It uh, the Western Caribbean does get a burst of increased shear, but that's going to be temporary. So that's what we have going on, and it's pr getting primed for hurricane season to really ramp up in August, unlike last year. And for the moisture component to this the sahara dust typically starts calming down after early august or so late july early august and it appears that it's gonna have one last major burst right here around late july july 30th 31st august 1st and then after that it's gonna start calming down the moist air is gonna at least temporarily cut off more of this much uh, sahara dust going through into the atlantic here and that's typically what you'll see in july or uh, early august as hurricane season continues to get primed up for development i would expect more tropical waves start coming off the atlantic uh, off of africa have a better potential to develop as time continues to go on, I don't think it's going to be happening anytime so anytime soon. There is one that I am paying attention to, and it's this one that's starting to come off of the Caribbean. Sorry, not the Caribbean, the of uh, the coast of Africa, right there. That is showing some potential signs of life right there. And the European ensembles have this tagged as well. And I'll go ahead and show that to you. We'll go ahead and refresh the page real quick, just to give you some uh, give you an idea of what's going on. But yeah. This is what we have going on right here. This is 95 uh, 5L right here. The European is pretty much giving up on 95L considering what's going on, the poor organization it's been dealing with recently. Still something to pay attention to, but the Europeans pretty much giving up on it. But they are focusing on this new tropical wave that's going to be coming off the coast of Africa in the next uh, 48 hours or so. And then start developing potentially organized several models have the strengthening up to hurricane strength now depending on if this is an impact to land or not we're not 100 percent sure primarily due to this bermuda high that's going on over here if that subtropical high is uh, continues to be that far east the, those systems are going to probably uh, miss land completely and just shift uh, more towards the north northeast or so so that's what we have for the european ensembles gfs ensembles we'll go ahead and show you those as well we'll show you the 12z for comparison right here the 12z uh, gfs has this tropical wave potentially organizing developing it actually has it a little bit further to the south than anticipated right here. It has it potentially approaching and hitting the Lesser Antilles, so definitely something to pay attention to in the next week or so. But the, ma the main show right here for the GFS, similar to the European, is this basically is not really that much of a threat to land outside of the Antilles. It's mainly uh, due to that, per that subtropical high over there. And it just mainly just drifts off into the sunset right there. So that's something we need to continue to keep an eye on. We'll continue to update you on the Pat's Path Predictor channel about all of this. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.